It's easy to feel invincible when we're in the driver's seat. It's my car, my rules. But there's another set of rules, the rules of the road that drivers sometimes feel don't apply to them. Today, we're gonna go through some of the worst driving habits from the mildly irritating to the downright dangerous. Are you a bad driver and don't even know it? Can't wait to find out how many I'm guilty of. It's a lot. Thanks to Omaze for partnering with Donut for this episode. Omaze is giving away a brand new BMW M8 competition coupe, including taxes and transport fees, plus 20 grand in cold hard cash to spend on anything you want. The M8 competition is one of the sickest new cars out there. It's got a zero to 60 time of three seconds, X drive, all wheel drive with a rear wheel drive option and an eight speed Steptronic transmission with manual shift option. Guys, this thing is fast. You can't beat that. Oh wait, yeah you can. When you donate for your chance to win, you're supporting the Ronald Reagan Medical Center at UCLA and helping them to buy more ECMO heart machines, the same machine that helped save James's life. So head on over to omaze.com slash donut and enter to win a BMW M8 competition coupe plus $20,000 in cold hard cash. Thank you very much, Omaze. First up, let's talk about parking. Parking is the easiest part of driving, yet we still find ways to screw it up. Real talk, I am horrible at it. Oh, shit, that's way too much. Let's get it. Yes, sir. <laughs> This was a massacre. Whether it be squeezing our wide boys into compact spots, blocking others in, a lot of people park like entitled bozos. I'm not sure what bugs me more, egregiously bad parkers or just inefficient ones. The ones who take up three good spots by parking like an a-hole, especially in big cities where street parking can be a nightmare. This sort of thing drives me nuts. Don't do that to your neighbor. Look, I'm not talking about those instances where the spot made sense when you pulled in and then everyone who was parked around you drove off and now you look like a jerk. I'm talking about when there's a wide open stretch of curb and you slap that baby in the park just like an absolute maniac just to feel alive. Okay, let's talk about the worst person you can encounter while parking, a spot saver. We all hate them and we hate to be them. There's just something so ridiculous about someone standing in a car's spot waiting to save it for a car that's not there when you in an actual car are there. This isn't grade school. There's no tap taps or savesies or sevens or whatever. This is road life. No biped tells me where I can and cannot park. I will run your ass over. Even worse are people who put up cones to reserve spots on public streets. You don't own that spot. Plus, those aren't even real cones. Those are from your kid's soccer practice. I will also run them over. Okay, we all know pollution is bad, but what about noise pollution? Yes, also bad. Blasting music, revving engines, honking toot toots and peeling out are all super fun, but there's a time and a place for it, okay? And that time is not at 3 a.m. on a residential street. Look, I get it. I used to be that guy pressing the overdrive off button in my automatic Mustang, turning off trash control and doing a Bernie at a stop sign. But I've also been at the other end of it. And it sucks to be woken up by a clapped out G35 burning rubber down my street. And as long as we're on the subject of noise, one beep of the horn is enough. If another driver pisses you off, laying on the horn will only piss off the innocent people around you. And that's just a big piss party and everyone has to get out of the pool. Some of the most annoying driving I see happens at stop signs. A more common infraction is the rolling stop, AKA the California roll. We've all done it. In this case, it is bad driving. I actually got ticketed for a California roll a few years ago and it cost me $225. I did it right in front of a police officer. <laughs> Uh, I did not, I did not see him. If people actually do come to a complete stop, they usually completely disregard the proper right of way. How hard is this to understand? At a four way stop, the right of way goes to whoever showed up first, unless you arrive at the same time, in which case the right of way goes to the person to the, huh, let me hear it, the right. Look how easy they made it to remember. Seriously, it's not that hard. The person on the right. Okay. What kind of stoplight person are you? Let me know. The kind who creeps into the intersection on a red light waiting for it to turn green? Or the one who zones out and gets honked at, then tries to save face by peeling out? Been there. Because either way, you're doing it wrong. Look, everyone knows, if you want a head start at the green light, you just hold down the accelerator on the second beep of Lakitu's start signal. 
Here's a rule of the road you may not even know about if you've never gotten a flat. It concerns your temporary spare tire, which is also known as the donut. Donut spares are designed lighter, narrower, and less durable than a full-size tire. They have to be in order to fit in your trunk. But this means they have less tread, meaning less traction, meaning decreased stopping and handling ability, which can make prolonged driving on one of these super dangerous. If you find yourself on a temporary spare, make sure you stay under 50 miles per hour and don't travel over 50 miles. But we've all seen that person who, who's had that spare on there for like a long time. Don't be that person. I don't see a single turn signal in there, which is cool. Cause it's not like having a blinking light that literally allows drivers to anticipate each other's movements would help everyone get on the same page or anything. That'd be stupid. It's so easy to use your blinker. Just a literal flick of the wrist, okay? Yet about half of drivers say they don't use them. Half? Are you guys insane? No wonder the world's like this. Not using your signal at all is lame, but using it late can be just as annoying. You know what I'm talking about. You're driving along and the dingus in front of you gives you no heads up, they're turning left. By the time that blinker's flashing, you have no room to get around them. Or this annoying scenario, you're turning left onto a busy street and you finally have an opening, but there's one car speeding towards you from your left. You wait because you don't have a death wish. And then at the last minute, they flip on that right blinker and turn onto your side street. Why? You couldn't have just like told me, you jerk. Now let's talk about tailgating. Not the awesome kind where you eat wings in a parking lot. The annoying kind where you drive really close to the person in front of you. Everyone's car needs a little breathing room, especially manuals which lurch and roll more than automatics, particularly in stop and go traffic. I will admit I am also guilty of this one. I do ride people's tails a lot. And I'm trying to change. Tailgating limits reaction time and increases your chances of having a collision, which nobody wants. And it can also lead to the super awkward experience of blocking the box. And we've all been there. I did this like two weeks ago. You're following too closely. You wind up in the middle of an intersection. The light turns red and you're stuck. And you're just in everyone's way, just sitting in your shame box, trying to avoid eye contact with people in every direction. It's horrible. I'm sorry. They aren't even mad at you. They're just disappointed, which we all know is much worse. Okay, all the driving habits I've talked about so far are inconsiderate, irresponsible, and frustrating to say the least, but let's dive into the stuff that accidents are made of, like the last minute merges. It's a crappy thing to do, and I'm sure each one of us has done it. Whether it's cutting people off to make your exit, merging at the last minute to stay on the freeway, or doing some sneaky zip merging to skip a line and waiting cars. I will say, however, that there's a special place in heck for drivers who cut off the person on their left in order to avoid a lane of parked cars instead of just waiting. Best case scenario, these sort of last minute maneuvers piss off the drivers around you. Worst case scenario, someone gets hurt. So let's all try to be a little more alert and not so impulsive behind the wheel. I am very calculating behind the wheel, I will say that. Another common driving don't, going the wrong speed for the lane you're in. Everyone knows the slow pokes are supposed to stay out of the fast lane, but a bigger and less talked about problem are the people driving fast in the slow lane, I will explain. The slow lane gets more congested because of all the merging that happens at on and off ramps. So careening down them is wildly dangerous. There's way more going on than the straightaway of the passing lane. Think about it. If someone's trying to merge at 40 and you're tearing through it at 80, think about that crash. It's not gonna be pretty. I will say going the wrong speed in the wrong lane is not as bad as going any speed in no lane. And I'm talking about those jerks who drive on the shoulder. I have never done this, I will say that. First off, let's call shoulder driving what it is, cheating. That strip of pavement outside the outer lane isn't a magical shortcut, okay? It's an emergency stopping lane. Also, no one who drives on the shoulder ever goes a normal speed, right? They're always like ripping down at 90 for absolutely no reason. Maybe they have to poop, I don't know. I mean, that's the only, uh, it's the poop speed. Okay, here's a big one. The one that every single one of you, no matter how righteous and upstanding and law-abiding you are, are absolutely guilty of, including me, distracted driving. One of the most common distractions while driving is of course texting or talking on the phone. First, let me hit you with some pretty messed up stats. Texting drivers are 23 times more likely to be in an accident, 23 times. Texting leads to more than 100,000 car crashes a year and is six times more likely to cause an accident than driving drunk. Take an already terrible idea, then multiply it by six. That's texting while driving. But what it really comes down to is making a commitment to not using your phone while driving. Here, I'll do it with you. I, Nolan Juniper Sykes, pledge to put away my phone and drive distraction free. 
Ah, oh, it actually feels good to say that out loud. But there are tons of other non-phone relating driving distractions as well. Trying to retrieve something that fell, putting on makeup, reading a book? What? Even eating and drinking at the wheel are considered distractions. I actually hate eating while driving. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Pizza is like the only food that's easy to eat while you're driving. Then there is rubbernecking, my absolute least favorite thing on the road. It's when people slow down to look at accident scenes. It gets its name from the way drivers crane their necks, right, to catch a glimpse as they pass by. Look, I get it, it's hard to control our morbid curiosity, but rubbernecking can cause congestion and accidents, especially rear end collisions, so try not to do it. Just do whatever you can. Also remember, we don't just share the road with other drivers. We also share it with pedestrians. Some are better than others. Drivers zip around corners, swerve through crosswalks, and slam on their brakes at the last minute with no regard for human life. These are pedestrians. They don't have a metal cage surrounding them. They are but mere flesh. We gotta look out for each other. All right, you did it. You made it to the across the board worst thing we as drivers subject each other to, road rage. Road rage is that Hulk-like fury we feel when another driver wrongs us on the roadway. It's that shouted expletive, the flipped bird. I've done that. But it's also way more serious stuff, like purposely hitting someone with your car. It's happened. Road rage incidents don't have to happen in your vehicle, however. If you assault someone because of a driving dispute, that's considered road rage too. True road rage is a criminal offense, unlike aggressive driving, which is a traffic violation. Look, it sucks to get cut off, but it's not the end of the world. All right, so what's my count, Alex? Show me my number. How many crimes did I commit? Not good. Driving laws, take one. Be kind. I'll see you next time. Haven't you ever heard the classic Supreme song? No, I'm not gonna do that. Stop in the name of sign before you break my car. Woo! Nope. Woo! Nope. That was horrible. You ever try to eat In-N-Out while driving? Like the Thousand Island sauce is just like dribbling out.